fucking, I, I'll, I'll watch these kids getting off the bus and it's like, it r reminds me of getting off the bus as a kid. Getting off the bus was like, it was like getting out of jail every five days a week. What the hell kind of fucking kid in his right mind likes to go to school? It's just they go, they go there and you go to school and it's just like everybody's yelling at you. You can't do anything right. Uh, everything you do is wrong. All the questions you ask are stupid. I don't know how it is now. That's how it was back then. Uh, to be honest with you, the teachers didn't really seem like they gave a shit. Uh, I used to have teachers that... I, I had a teacher, Mr. Reese. Here he goes, Mr. Reese, look him up. Copeg High School. He used to sit there and read the fucking newspaper, the whole class. He'd hand out, he'd hand out all these notes. You had to copy the notes. He handed out Xerox notes. You had to copy the notes into your notebook. And that was it, that was the class. He was the football coach. And if you didn't do your homework, which was copying more notes, copying, I felt like I was going to school to learn how to be a fucking Xerox machine. And if you didn't do your homework, he took you out in the hallway and he punched you right in your, in your chest as hard as he could. No lie. No, I've been punched in the chest by Mr. Reese. Yeah, but this is what, September, October? September, October, this rem always reminds, this time of year, always reminds me of when I got my PS1. Right around Halloween, oh, Halloween time. I, I, I got stories, I got stories for you guys about Halloween, let me tell you. Listen, one time, my friend, he wanted to be Lord Helmet. My buddy VS. He wanted to be Lord Helmet from Spaceballs. So, at the time, he owned a shop and like a metal fabrication shop, and he 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 welded up like this whole like uh, it was like a whole metal the the whole like metal frame. It was like a metal frame. And it had a shoulder mount so it could rest on his shoulder. Most elaborate Halloween costume of all time. So he calls me up. He goes, yeah, he goes, I'm, I'm doing this thing. I'll, I'm going to be Lord Helmet. He goes, I got this, this metal frame, but I'm not really sure how to cover it. So I go over there and we're looking at it and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, that's it. I said, listen, we'll cover the damn thing with like saran wrap or like shrink wrap. And then we'll bondo over it. So he's like, I, I don't think he ever used bondo before. So I was like, yeah, this bondo stuff, it's great. It's like, it's like plastic. This fucking asshole's gonna mow his goddamn lawn right next to us. Hey, yeah, we're out of here. All right. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I figured we'll move to a darker location. All right, so... We wind up going to the store and we buy a can of Bondo. And we go home, we smear it on the helmet, and we quickly we quickly realize that, that one can just isn't going to cut it. We're, we're talking about cans, the big can, like get at this. It's like a $45 can. We wind up going through five more cans of Bondo, smearing it all over this helmet. Finally, the, the, the helmet looks like a fucking birthday cake. It looks like, it looks like a stucco wall. It's so rough. So we got to get a grinder and a belt sander, and we start grinding and sanding and grinding and sanding this helmet. I swear to God, I think, I think Halloween, I don't remember, but I think Halloween was either, it might have been that day. It might have been that day or, or the next day. It took us like eight, nine hours of sanding just to smooth out this whole helmet. And I mean, it was so, so much, so much dust that, and we didn't have, weren't wearing masks or anything like that. We'll probably have mesothelioma in five years. Get it? It would. 
It might have been that night, Halloween, because I remember he said to spray paint the whole thing black and the paint was still wet. And when we were getting on the train, people were bumping into the helmet and getting like b black paint all over them. So I think it was that day. But man, he had it nailed down. So I knew that Lord Helmet costume was perfect. He had the flip, he had the flip up uh, face cover, the cape. The, I mean, it was just like it was perfect. It was perfect. And even when he spoke inside of it, it all it automatically sounded like Lord Helmet because it was so cavernous inside of there. It had that that reverb, that echo in there. So. So I said, I knew he was doing this project. So I was like, this Halloween, I got to blow the fucking doors off. This is going to be a special one. My friend Steve was going to be Bart Simpson. We had Lord Helmet. I was like, I got to blow the doors off. So I went down to the supermarket. And I bought about 15 pounds of London broil. Because I was going to be the most powerful and greatest superhero to ever walk the planet Earth. Captain Cunt. I remember I bought this, this generic, like, astronaut outfit. And the curliest black wig I could find. And I had a cardboard cutout on, on the chest. And I put the, all the hair around there. And I took the London broil and I cut it. <laughs> I cut it appropriately, you know, so to make the appropriate chest piece for Captain Cunt. And then, you know, naturally I had a utility belt with my insignia emblazoned on the buckle. And, you know, I had douches hanging on there and tampons and whatnot. You know, things you would expect to see on Captain Cunt's utility belt. And, uh, and my cape was a maxi, a maxi pad that naturally had, was full of menstrual, a menstrual cycle. Needless to say, my parents were very proud when they discovered, all, when they saw all the photos that were on Facebook and whatnot. So anyway, yeah, so I wired this, I wired all this meat onto, onto my chest. Anyhow, we, we went out there, we blew the doors off. It was, it was the it was chalk it up one of the, the best Halloween I've ever had. We were in the we, we number one. We go out to the bars. We get fucking loaded, and people are coming up to me and they're like, "Who are who are you?" And naturally, I would say, "I'm Captain Cunt." And they would go and they would they, they were curious, so they would touch they would touch the meat and whatnot. And they and girls would girls would go, "Ew, what is that?" And I'd say, "That's that's 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 meat. That's real red meat. You just got hepatitis." So anyway, needless to say, we had a blast that night. But anyway, as the night went on, we got drunker and drunker and drunker. We go to this one bar. I'm wandering around. I, I I I lost VS. I didn't. I lost Steve. I didn't know where anybody was. I'm wandering around I'm having a drink. Next thing you know, I see this whole crowd like gathering toward the front of the building. So I'm like, oh, what's going on over there? I walk out over there and I see my buddy VS, Lord Helmet, and he's right in the face of the bouncer and they're having words back and forth. So I'm like, oh shit! I I kind of run around the. I kind of get through the crowd to get in there. And I kind of put, take the ass and, I, and I, I break him up from the bouncer. I'm like, all right, all right, you know, no problems here, no problems here. I back my buddy VS out. And, oh, before that all happens, as he's as VS is yelling at him, he takes off the helmet and he puts it next to him on the on the sidewalk, so naturally he can really get in the, the bouncer's face. So I run up. I I say, all right, all right, all right, all right calm down, calm down. I, I grab VS and I kind of I kind of bring him. Push him back into the street. I'm telling the bouncer, it's all right, it's all right. And I said, VS, you know, it's not worth it. We'll get the fuck out of here. Fuck this guy, blah, blah, blah. And I turn around and I look at the bouncer. And he picks up the helmet. And he launches it. And as, 
as he launches it, he says, get the fuck out of here. And I was just like, it was like everything turned into slow motion. It was like, oh, <laughs> and I know VS was doing the same thing. The helmet was like, <sighs> it landed in the middle of the street and it shattered like a piece of glass. And it was like, it was like, even though it was all that work, and I mean a lot of work went into that fucking costume, that fucking helmet. <laughs> people were offering to buy this helmet. We were out, and people wanted to buy it. Anyway, the fucking thing shattered into a million pieces. And I gotta tell you, I could not stop laughing. Because it was just, it was just so fucking funny. Oh, God. What a Halloween. Jeez, next time next time we talk Halloween, I'll tell you about the time I was a Trojan Magnum box. That costume was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and and I got so, so we're in this this oh, I got to tell this story. I I was I built this this costume. I was a full size Trojan Magnum box. It came out great. We went out to the club and whatnot, and the guy grabs me. He goes, "Come on, you're coming up on stage for the contest. We're having the contest now." So I'm like, "All right, I'm all in." So it comes down to me and a guy dressed like Optimus Prime. Good costume, but I was like, "I got this one in the bag." So they did the old, uh, you know. Who wants to vote for this guy? And then he put my, the guy put his hand over my head. And, you know, the music. And the crowd's going crazy, crazy. They're going crazy. Then he goes, how about Optimus Prime? What do you think this prick does? He gets down. He transforms into the truck. Okay? So that was, that was impressive enough. He didn't show that earlier. He gets down, he fall. he knew what he was doing. He's done this before. He falls into the truck, and what happens? The fucking headlights turn on. I was like, oh no, it's like no fucking way, man. Come on. I was just I felt like just walking off the stage. Needless to say, second place. Got a hundred bucks. Optimus Prime! Hello, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? We're good. At first I saw you my friend's son. I was like, oh, Christopher. Oh, wait, you're not Christopher. Oh, Christopher must be handsome. He is, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing today? I'm not bad. Oh, we're still trying to set up. We got a lot of crap. I got a saw inside. I haven't pulled it out yet. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You got games for this thing? Um, ask the girl. Oh, just a duck hunt. I don't know. They're 
I got in here? Duck hunt. Duck hunt. Babe, all they, all they got in here is duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What are you What are you asking for? It? For the the game system. Five bucks. Five bucks? Yeah. Hi. Good morning. How you doing? Not bad. Not bad. Do 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 do. How much you asking for the games? Three. Three each? Got any other video games? Any old uh, Nintendo, Sega, anything like that? No? Take two for it. Sure. Only because I don't have change. Yeah. Oh. Hi there. Oh, boy. What's up? Do 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 do. The prices aren't negotiable on it. I got the flea market prices on them. So. Oh, okay. Do 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 do. Why? What are you asking for Nintendo games? Most of them five. I guess the sports games a little cheaper. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, let see. Ten bucks. I have to price them like high at the flea market, otherwise the vendors come and they buy my stuff for what <laughs> I would sell it for, and then they mark it up. Right. Right. And that's something. That's what I always tell people. You gotta, you gotta ask. You gotta haggle. Gotta How much would you be asking for the PlayStation stuff? PlayStation? Uh, it depends on which game. You looking for anything in particular? <laughs> you don't have any Turbo Graphics stuff, do you? No. Wow, I haven't heard Turbo Graphics mentioned in a while. Yeah. What is this thing right here? It's a Dreamcast. It's actually, when I bought my first Dreamcast, yeah. it didn't work right, and they sent me a new one, and then two weeks later they sent me another one. Oh. So I just kept it. It's never been used. What are you asking for? It? 75. 75. I mean, I've never ever seen one in a refurb box, except for this one. And how much for the Nintendo games you said? Five. Five each? All right, I'll take I'll take this one. Can't go wrong with Star Trek. Yeah. I just yeah. got Star Tropics too. I never played it. Oh yeah. Never. I never saw it. It was never available anywhere for sale. So I was like, okay. And then I bought a lot of games from somebody, and it was in there. I was like, oh, awesome. It's your sale? Yes. Can well, I a bunch of us. Oh. Any video games at all? Video games. Yeah. Any um. Anything, uh, old Nintendo, Sega, anything like that? Nintendo? Yeah. We actually have a whole Nintendo set with games and stuff like that. Um, sure. Bring out those video games. Alright, we have the whole set, all the controls, games, everything, but we would want 200 for it. 200? Yeah. How many games? Yeah, I can leave it there. I'll take a look. Let me see. Well, that, you know, we had everything. My kids had everything. Yeah, let me take a look at it. So, I don't know. 
you know, we had it out, but my sister said she was online at work a lot, so we took it off, so we had to take it and put it online. Okay, yeah, that's a little too much for me. Okay. I appreciate it, though. Thank you. Got any video games at all? What do you see? Where are they? Hey. Ridge Racer. How much for the game? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Oh. Now, yeah, 25 bucks. <laughs> That'd be the best thing I knew all day. Babe, you got a quarter? Get a quarter out of the truck, will you? Make sure it's in there. Open it up. Come on, please, babe. Make Ray. sure it's in there. Make sure it's in there. Do, 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 do. Yep. How much are you asking for the video games? Uh, what, we stick with games? No, the uh, GameCube. Oh, the GameCube? Yeah, two bucks, I guess. Two bucks each? Yeah. Take five for the three? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, yeah. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was my first That's who I think it is. Ah, fighter stick for the Sega Genesis. Fifteen dollars. Fighter stick. And Bryn, Bryn was getting girls too because she had to fight with her boyfriend. Here's the Sega Genesis. Here we go. Next mutant. Double dragon. King of monsters. Too. Yes, okay, see, I was right. Jen. Oh yeah, look at this. How many arcade fighter six do they got around here? You're asking you're asking dollar piece for the games? Yes. Alright, I got a... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, six. Take ten for this? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I say they have the whole day, yeah. Oh, the, a whole beautiful day, too. No, tomorrow's supposed to be just fine. Eighty degrees. Listen, I'll take this to the end of September, right? Big time. Got any video games at all? Any old uh, Nintendo, Sega, anything like that? Atari? PlayStation?
Wait, oh, it's out here? How did I miss it? See it right here? Where? I don't know. What, where were the games? Oh, oh the games you're looking. I yeah, had a PlayStation. Oh, you got the PlayStation there. Okay. No games for it? You know what? I think I do. Could you hold on a second? Sure. Yeah, I don't do that. What are you asking for it? Oh, what do you got yeah. there? Oh, yeah. So how much are you asking for it? For, for this? Yeah. 20 bucks for this and $5 dollars each. Perfect. Oh, and how much? Five each? Five each. Thank you very much. Okay. Perfect. Take 10 for it. Got any, uh, got any video games at all? Uh, what are you looking for? Anything. Any old Nintendo, Sega, anything like that? Uh, anything. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm trying to think of where they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, just give me a Yeah, sure, okay. Sure. I'm going to Holy mackerel. Jeez. How much is the chopstick? Uh, you can have it. Thank you. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> oh, look at those two cute. What are you asking for this stuff? Uh, I don't know. I actually wasn't even going to put it out until you asked for it. so cute. <laughs> I used to collect a lot of the stuff. Mm. They've been to the beach for a while, you know. Right. Oh. Did you remind me of my dog? Oh, good ball. Oh, good ball. How much would you do for everything? <laughs> for everything? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to get rid of everything. Do you have all these systems? I have, all, yeah, I have all of them. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know if I want to get rid of all of them. I figured you just wanted like a couple, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I honestly don't want to get rid of all of them. There you go. Well, what would you, what would you ask for? Them? For all of them? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of priceless to me, you know? Uh, I like I like a lot of the Nintendo. Yeah, I, I honestly don't want to get rid of all of them. I mean, if you want to pick out some, that would be cool. Um, the, uh, the PlayStation 1, which is down at the bottom, yeah. those ones I don't care about. I'll get rid of all of them. Alright, let me see what we got. The Nintendo a lot, though. I want to keep those for those, though. I guess so. I'll get rid of some of them, but it took me a while to put this collection together, you know? All right. Oh. Let me see this here. Oh. This thing's actually kind of neat. It's got a bunch of games on it. Oh, is it all like a plug and play? Yeah, exactly. What would you be asking for the PlayStation stuff? For all of them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love video games. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't work like yeah, that, does I it? Yeah, I trouble with that. Actually, uh, the PlayStation 2 I'll get rid of also. you interested in that? We got PlayStation 2 games? Yeah. I got PlayStation 3 also. Yeah, I'm, I'm more into the older stuff. Yeah. Those are more the ones that I don't want to get rid of. Right. Uh, I'll do all the PlayStation ones for... Uh, 30 bucks? 
30 bucks. Yeah. And you're not looking to get sell anything else? Like I said, I'll get rid of some of them, but I don't want to get rid of all of them, you know? If there's any doubles, you're welcome to have them. All right. <laughs> I know I got a bunch of doubles of some of the PlayStation ones. Uh, Tetris I'll get rid of. Friday the 13th I'll get rid of. Okay. Thank you. That one I'll get rid of. This one I'll pass one on. I'll get rid of. I'm not into sports too much. This one. Yeah, just let me know. Uh, oh, I'll get rid of. Okay. This thing I'll get rid of. Okay. This one I got a I got yeah, a couple of copies of those. That's pretty common. Dynasty Warriors. And the PlayStation 2 games. Dance aerobics. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's quirky. I'll grab yeah, that. Okay. What about that? Yeah, I think that's it. These you these you want to keep? Um, I didn't look at them yet. Uh, I have double. No, I don't. Have... No, those ones I don't want to get rid of. Okay. You you, say you didn't want the PlayStation 2, right? You yeah, know? you did have uh, Capcom. I don't. I, I just put it down over here. I don't know where it went though. Oh shit! I might have picked it up. The fighting game. Where did it go? What this one? No. Capcom versus S Somewhere S and K well. PS2. Yeah. Oh, wait, I had, I, oh, there it is, right there, right there, the PS2 game. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. There it is. All right, so the rest of the stuff you're keeping, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. You need uh, Mario 2? I got two of them. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That's cool. So, okay, this and the PlayStation 2 games. All right. How all much? That? And these ones too, or no? No, not those. Okay. Um, so all of that? Yep. Uh, all right, that sounds good. I love playing my old original Nintendo. I love yeah. playing Mario. Mario. I love playing the original Mario. I love All right. I've got to go up to the attic and dig it out. I know where it is. Can okay. Five minutes. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Well, you got Super Nintendo games? Yeah. I think I have one lying around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any type of any type of old video games you got, I'm interested. Just Nintendo. Oh, Super Bomber, man. Are you getting rid of it? I don't know. I didn't stop, though, I just told her where it was. Did the girl pay you for the first time? And it works? Yep. Um, we had it plugged in about a year ago. It's just when we were around with it, I have, I don't know, 10 or 15. All the games have the uh, controller overlay. Oh, right, the overlay. That's right, it has overlays. Yep. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's kind of false dated, obviously. How much? You know, I never thought anybody would be interested in buying it. I mean, what do you think? The uh, twenty bucks with the uh, with the game. My my hands are shaking. Look at this. I had to bring the pot out. That's the kind of day we had. Listen, guys, you're gonna hate me today. Hell, I even hate me today, and I'm me. Bithead 1000, you tuned into the greatest fucking video game program in the history of human civilization. I mean, listen, guys, I don't like to brag on myself. I don't like to brag about the show. But we hit a fucking home run out of the park today. That, it, 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 it went out of the park. It landed in the football field. It bounced. It split the fucking uprights. And then it went flying on a golf course. And it went right in the fucking hole. All right, come on. Ah, oh, come on. What a corny joke. <laughs> anyway, Bithead 1000 here. This might be... Listen. That Nintendo haul that we got that time, this might be better than that fucking Nintendo haul.
Where do we start? Let's get started. Okay. So right out of the gate this morning, we picked up this Nintendo. I mean, the morning started out very, very slow. Uh, a Nintendo Zappa cords, whoop de doo uh, The Nintendo itself is about as ragged as the woman that was selling it. It had a, a copy of Duck Hunt in it. It doesn't even close. whoop de doo Five dollars. Five dollars for a Nintendo. I couldn't pass it up. Okay. Second garage sale. Again, no big shakes. Uh, just a couple of Wii games out there, and one of the Wii games happened to be uh, Resident Evil 4, the Wii edition. Which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we got it for two dollars. I'm so I'm so amped up right now. I, I don't even know how much we paid for it. I'd have to I'll have to go back and look. Okay. Uh, third sale that we went to. Uh, a reseller is a guy that ran um, a flea market that goes to the flea market, a local flea market by me, which I happen to never go to because I find, not to be snobby about it, but I find flea markets probably the most depressing place you can possibly go if you're searching for retro video games. I know a lot of people have a lot of luck at, at flea markets, but I tend to shy away because it's just like, uh, you know, resellers and various other parasites there. Uh, subhumans and and vagrants so here we go uh, a guy had a bunch of video game stuff out there he had a Sega Dreamcast that was in a in a refurbished box like a, a reconditioned Sega Dreamcast that was re that was in a box that he claimed they never took out it, that was very interesting he wanted 75 for it all the other games were priced uh, for what you ex you would expect a, re a reseller to price their games for, but I I think I caught the guy with this Star Tropics that we nabbed for five dollars. I think Star Tropics is well worth five bucks. Okay, uh, moving on to the next sale. Again, uh, a couple GameCube games out there. I think the guy wanted three dollars a piece for them. His wife wanted three dollars a piece, and then he he had mentioned two dollars a piece. So I just picked some titles out of there that I was interested in. Uh, Metroid Prime, very cool. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine. And Mario Kart Double Dash. Now, I was able to bundle these together for $5. The following garage sale, just a copy of your Ridge Racer for the DS. No big shakes. Got it for a quarter. I feel that was an outstanding price. Okay, so then that happened. Uh, now here's the thing. Here's the thing that's gonna, that's almost gonna sh send a shiver down your spine. Cause it sent shivers down my spine. Went to this garage sale last week. And all too often, I'll go to, I'll see garage sale sign the following week. A lot of times you have junkers, resellers who have the same garage sale every week. I got caught. I wound up going to this garage sale twice. We pull up in front of it. My girlfriend says, hey, babe, we were here last week. I said, oh, fuck, you're right. Let's get out of here. And I started to drive away. My hand to God, I started to drive away. And I noticed on the table something that wasn't there the previous week. A subwoofer. And I just said to myself, let me go in there and check out this sale just to see if this guy got anything new. I go up there, different guy running the sale, 
younger kid. I said to him, hey, you got any video games or whatnot? Guy goes, yeah, I got some video games, okay? He comes out with this fucking bin. It's loaded with, on, on the very top, Sega Genesis boxed, um, boxed Nintendo games. I never, I've never found boxed NES games. That is one of the biggest thrills to me, to be able to find uh, boxed NES games. As soon as I saw that, I don't know if you can see in the video, I haven't checked it yet. My hand started shaking, like out of control. I don't have a poker face when it comes to buying video games. When I see what I want, I get very excited. If I had a tail, it would have knocked over a couple tables. So, I, the guy says to me, I, I automatically said, I said, how much do you want for a whole bin? Because I, I, I could see the bin had all great stuff in it. Oh, I'm not sure if I want to sell the whole bin. The whole bin. Uh, you know, I want some of these Nintendo games and ba 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 ba. So I'm like, oh my god, this is like my worst nightmare. This, uh, so I'm like, okay. So I'm like, well, what do you what do you want? So he starts separating out the Nintendo games. He takes the Adventures of Link in the box. He takes. Uh, he starts taking out the games and whatnot. He goes, but I got PlayStation 1 games at, at the bottom that I don't really care about. And I was like, yeah, that makes two of us. I, I'm looking at boxed NES games. I didn't even look at the game, the, the, the PlayStation 1 games below. So I'm like, I don't really care about those either. I'm, I'm more focused on what, what boxed NES games you want and what boxed NES games you don't want. So he starts taking them out. And then I take a look at the, the PS1 games and I'm like, okay, wow, that's a great title. I'm like, wow, that's a great title. Wow, that's a great title. Wow, that's a fucking great title. That's a fucking great title. Wow, what a fucking title. It just kept on going on and on and on. And finally, I almost forgot about the boxed NES games, and I went straight, my focus was on these PS1 games. PS1 games that you don't find anywhere. Nowhere. It's like those Sega Genesis games, those electronic arts RPGs that you don't find anywhere. These are the PS1 games that when I bought my PS1, I would sit there and drool over. And the PS1 was so, um, how would you say, uh, I felt so out of touch with the PS1 because there was so many selections on the wall when you would go to the game store. So many things that you want. It just seemed out of my control. It seemed like I couldn't, I couldn't focus it like I could with other systems. And I'm like, and here it was. So let, let's get started. Let's get started right here. And we'll start with the PS1 games. And all these games are in immaculate shape. Discs, disc wide, all the discs are there. They're all complete. I checked them out. I couldn't help myself. I just wanted to make sure that it was legit. So here we go. Here's a game that ties in with the last three weeks. Uh... Sukoden? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but here it is, the original Sukoden for the PlayStation. Final Fantasy VII. Resident, a game I'm so happy to get back again. Resident Evil Director's Cut. Final Fantasy IX. Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy uh, Four, Final Fantasy Chronicles, Final Fantasy Four, and and Chrono Trigger. Oh God, this is a game I remember specifically staring at at Electronics Boutique. Breath of Fire, Breath of Fire. This is probably the only one that has a zinged up instruction manual. It's it's very wrinkled. But other than that, the uh, the actual game is in very good shape. Breath of Fire, I can't wait to play this game. Uh, Sukoden 2. Jeez, I think we, we're, we're almost going to have the whole entire goddamn series soon. Uh, Cartier, The World of Fate. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh, Jesus Christ, look at this. Grandia, wow, I tell you what, the PS1 has some very special games, some very, very special games that I, I didn't think I was ever going to be able to find, 
And what a treat and what a treasure to actually come across them. Okay. Uh, the Legend of Dragoon. If this has any connection, I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with the game. I'm not familiar with a lot of these games. Uh, but if this has any connection to uh, Panzer Dragoon or Panzer Dragoon Saga, then, then I'm thrilled. Uh, Azor Dreams. Jurassic Park, The Lost World. A game that I did have. Uh, the Collector's Package, uh, Final Fantasy Anthology. I had this game as well. Final Fantasy Tactics. The music always used to put me to sleep in this game. I really struggled with staying awake. There's, there's two role-playing games that I've played that I really struggled staying awake with. And that was uh, Albert Odyssey and... Final Fantasy Tactics. The music just, for some reason, it's very uh, relaxing. Tomb Raider Chronicles. Chrono Cross. Mortal Kombat um, Mythology Sub-Zero. Mega Man X4. Uh, the Legend of Legalia, Leg Legalia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wild Arms, uh, Rainbow Six, whoop de doo, and Twisted Metal Two. Uh, Twisted Metal 2 I'm actually very excited about. Uh, I want to round up all the Twisted Metal games and play them from the first one till, till, well, till the latest ones. But guys, listen. If that's not a who's who of PS1 games, I, I don't know what is. I, I can only think of a, a few other titles... Uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm a little I'm, I'm, I'm astonished by it. I'm astonished by it. And I think I think pound for pound, this could be better than than the Nintendo Hall pound for pound. Because some of those Nintendo games, I'm confident that I'll come across eventually. But some of these PS1 games, I just don't. I don't, I don't, I don't believe. I don't believe. So there you go. We managed to, to get a, a, a few boxed NES titles. Uh, not many, but what a thrill to have boxed NES games. That's a, a dream of mine to have boxed NES titles. I think they're just so cool uh, in the package with the manual. Uh, I just remember buying them like that. So it's so extremely cool to get them back like that. So here we go. Bases loaded too. He said, "You want bases loaded?" I, I, I look at it. I said, "I don't want a fucking sports game." But I'm like, "How often are you gonna find bases loaded too in the box?" Okay. Super Mario Brothers two. Tetris. And Friday the Thirteenth with a with an extremely messed up box. So. And also in there, he included a couple of loose uh, NES titles. Racket Attack. Wheel of Fortune. And, uh, and Dance Aerobics. For some reason, I wanted this. The label kind of made me laugh. So uh, I wanted that. And then uh, um, a couple of PS2 games as well. Final Fantasy X, Sukoden uh, 4, Dynasty Warriors 2, 
uh, a game that we we got recently, but we didn't actually get the case for. Capcom versus SNK Two, Mark of the Millennium. Uh, I love all these fighting games. You know, PS Two and back. I love them all. Final Fantasy X Two. You know what it is? The dynamic with fighting games, playing fighting games with your buddies, uh, you know, brings back so many memories. Just just sitting around, burning time, drinking, playing playing fighting games. I mean, uh, I'm sure everybody has those memories and they, they hold them close to their heart. But uh, one day we'll have to talk about fighting games and stuff like that. And uh, Sukoden 3. So there it is. Let's get this together. Oh, and one N64 game, F-Zero X. So here we go. All those games for $40. Forty dollars. I was thinking to myself when I left that sale. When I left that sale, I kicked myself in the ass so hard. I said to myself, "Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. You did well." I said, "Don't be greedy." But I said to myself, "Geez, if I would have just threw the guy a hundred dollars, if he wanted forty for that, if I would have just said, hey, how about a hundred dollars for the whole bin?' I think we'd be talking about the whole bin right now." Whew. Let me tell you something. I ran back to my van with uh, my van. I don't even drive a van. I ran back to my pickup like I was running from the cops. That was feel good garage sailing right there. Okay, let's move on to the next sale. All right, we're through, we're through the halfway mark here. I don't think I'm going to make it. My hands are, aren't shaking enough. I got to pour myself more coffee. Listen, this coffee right here. You pour this coffee on your grandmother's grave, she'll hop out of the fucking ground and start throwing sewing needles like Chinese stars. Okay, next sale. So you're gonna say to me, okay, so you want you want the timeline? The timeline is after that PS1 haul. You know, it's like ejaculating. I, I don't mean to sound <laughs> graphic or anything like that. It's just like your shoulders just go like, like your whole body's like, <sighs> it's a feeling of relaxation that I can't even explain. It's like, you know, if I don't, I don't have to break my ass now, driving a thousand miles, blowing through every stop sign and, and red light to try to get to every garage sale, scratching and clawing my way up every driveway to find something. It's like, ah. <sighs> I can relax now. I can take a breath. I can smell the flowers. I can look at the, the the trees around me. I can enjoy myself. So, me and my old lady, we decide to go get a bacon, egg, and cheese. Sit down and eat. And from there, we're talking about almost 12 o'clock. Maybe even 12.30. Because remember I told you that the garage sale started out slow. We started out with a, a, a few little items over here. And we went to, and I could tell because I checked the files on my camera, we went to 45 garage sales. So, here we go, right around the 12.30 mark. I know that there are guys out there that quit 10 o'clock, no, maybe not 10 o'clock, but 11 o'clock, noon, they're done. So I think this was right around noon time. Okay, first of all, I want to explain to you that she had these Sega joysticks out here. Uh, I've never seen this joystick before. I, I found it wildly interesting. It's the fighting stick. The fighter stick SG7. And it's made by uh, Askeywear. Now she had two of these out there labeled a dollar. And she had one of them that was in the box. Sega logo on it and all that. Uh, she wanted $15 for. 
very strange. But if I'm gonna get two, if I'm gonna get buy one for a dollar, I'm not gonna pay more than five dollars for the one in the box. Maybe I should have offered five dollars. I was just like, I was so happy to get these two that I, I walked right by the one in the box. What am I gonna do with three arcade joysticks? Okay. And um, a whole bunch of Sega Genesis games were sitting out there. I tell you what, when it rains, it pours. And here it is, it's September. I like to say that we work really hard, and we do. We do. We work really hard. And I don't like when people tell me I get lucky. Because I really break my ass out there. And you say, oh, you go into garage sales and whatnot, how do you break your ass? I, I, I break my ass. I get stressed out. I work really hard to find this shit. But I tell you what, uh, <laughs> we might have got lucky today. Okay. Miss Pac-Man. Uh, Double Dragon, The Shadow Falls. I've never seen Double Dragon for the Sega Genesis. I'm really curious about this game. And what a cool looking box. And look at this. This was $59.99 at KB Toys. Oh my god, KB Toys, you should be ashamed of yourself. Where's KB Toys now? They're not around anymore. They're rotten in hell for ripping off kids. Imagine you're a little kid and you want to buy a, a, a game for $60 at, the t at that time, even today. Wow, very cool game. King of the Monsters 2. I believe I remember playing this in the arcade for the Neo Geo. I wonder how it translates uh, to the Genesis. X-Mutants. Jurassic Park. An unopened copy of Caesar's Palace. Again, this was $49.99 when it came out at KB Toys. Look at that. Jeopardy. RBI Baseball 93. Kid Chameleon, very, very, very cool game for the Sega Genesis, and a, a game that I think a lot of uh, re retro retro collectors might not know about. Very interesting uh, platforming game where you you wear these different helmets and, and change into like uh, different characters and, and with different different characters with different attributes. Good game. Clue. And Dynamite Hetty. So there you go. Um, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 Sega Genesis games, plus the two controllers, and we were able to get that for $10. Okay. Just when you think the day is over, and we were on our way home, and I always get into this mode as we get close to the neighborhood because we cut, we take the highway on the way home, and then we 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 drift in through the neighborhood, and by that time she's done. She doesn't want to see another garage sale. I know I wear her down, uh, but I, for some reason I can't stop. I get the fever. So, the battery on my camera glasses is dead. Uh, I had to rely on my phone, so the footage for this one is really poor. So let me get started. I asked the guy if he has any video games. He goes, sure, I got an Intellivision. Then his wife is like, yeah, and I have a Nintendo. And why don't you go try to... But she's telling me how she played... Uh, she loves Super Mario Brothers, blah, blah, blah. And then her, her daughter's like, Yeah, and what about the Super Nintendo? And she goes, Yeah, why don't you bring that game out? It's, it's on the staircase. I mean, the inside of this person's house must have been a fucking disaster. Because the way they're talking is all the stuff was inside the house. He's up in the attic. The Super Nintendo's over here in the house. Blah, 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 blah. 
Anyhow, the first thing that comes out is the daughter. And she has... Look at this. Super Bomberman 2. Right away, I see, I see a Super Nintendo boxed game come out of that door. And my nipples started getting hard. I'm like, oh boy. So I ask him, oh, you got any more uh, uh, Super Nintendo games? If you, if you have the Super Nintendo, are you willing to sell it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we have the Super Nintendo and whatnot. And we have a couple more games for it, but we don't know where they are. So then, boom, the door comes open again. And before I can even continue to think about Super Nintendo stuff, out comes, out comes this box with an Intellivision on top of it and a slew of Intellivision games inside and all I had to do was poke my head inside I knew I wanted it how much I don't know what games are in here we're gonna discover it all together so um, as she's saying that as I'm looking at this boom she comes out with the Super Nintendo. So I'm at that point where it's like, okay, let's make a deal. $20 for the Intellivision stuff. When she came out with the Super Nintendo, which I believe wasn't in the in the actual uh, video, uh, I offered $10 for the, for the Super Nintendo. And she said, fine. And she goes, when I find the games, not I'll call you, she said, call me. And I said, great. She goes, I'll have them by Tuesday. You can come pick them up at Tuesday. And I'm hoping they're in the box, much like this bomber man was in the box. So I have her number. I'll be calling her Tuesday. And I, I know where she lives. So here we go. We got the Intellivision here with... Not a good time. All right, I'm I'm really sorry about the interruption. Uh, there's a lot of people that out there that don't realize that I'm I'm running a hit broadcast. So here it is, the Intellivision, the Intellivision, and it's got it's got tropical. <laughs> look at this. Look at the look at this game sticker. It looks like, it looks like, it looks like Ron Jeremy chasing down Rick Moranis f for a vicious anal rape. <sighs> Boy. Anyway, where were we? Let's get back to business here. Okay. NFL football. Boxing, Space Armada, Nova Blast, it's not, it's not in here, box is crushed, Las Vegas Blackjack Poker, another, another crushed box. Sea Battle, Tron Deadly Discs, New Atlantis, which is in a crushed box, Super Video Auto Racing, wow, look at this, Advanced, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I remember playing this game for the Intellivision, and trying to figure it out. I could never really figure it out. Uh, Super Video Arcade Star Strike. Mission X. <laughs> Shit. Donkey Kong. Superb version of Donkey Kong. Super Video Video Arcade Space Hawk, 
box is crushed down. Astro Smash. Oh boy. Uh, Super Video Arcade Night Stalker. Vectron. Mazatron. Oh, oh, again, again, Tropical Trouble. Now maybe you can get a better shot of that box art. Super Video Arcade Triple Action. Here's an interesting game. New Microsurgeon. Um, there's a couple of inserts in here. I know a lot of these boxes are crushed down, but all, all the games are here and all the inserts are here. Pitfall. I've never played Pitfall for the Intellivision. I'd be really, really curious to play it because I was only familiar with the 26, Atari 2600 version of Pitfall. Again, another insert. And a bunch of game a bunch of games in here that that belong in those boxes and a bunch of instruction manuals again that that also belong in those boxes and some wires and stuff like that so wow yeah here we go let me get the games all out here what a wonderful we don't have any Intellivision games at the moment. I used to have a lot of Intellivision games, but we don't have any at the moment. So what a wonderful way to, to start up our Intellivision collection. Here we go. The Intellivision, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, Roughly 21 games, the Intellivision, Bomberman, Super Bomberman 2, and we also got the Super Nintendo for 30 bucks. So, wow, we. Uh, and we're going to go pick up the other games on Tuesday, which I'll present to you guys in the following episode. That was a good one. I'm happy about that. I tell you what, I feel like we're gaining momentum and we're building up um, a now respectable gaming collection. The only problem is I don't have uh, enough room for any of these games. Certainly not the games that we picked up and not the games that we got from 97 Retro Game Nerd last week. So... I got some work to do. I do for this show.
You might notice some Spanish music playing in the background. Those are just the neighbors. Don't be alarmed. It's perfectly normal for this area. So here we go. Isn't this exciting? It's the, our all new high capacity gaming shelf. Now what I'm going to consider this, this is going to be like the overflow tank. When we overflow over here, games are going to go over here. This won't be the focus or the main focus of the show, but it's going to be a tremendous part of our ability to actually hold on to games. The original plan was we were going to get rid of the games that were, I guess, less valuable or whatnot, and just keep premium titles inside of the old shelf. But I got to tell you guys, it was the idea of getting rid of anything was simply breaking my heart. So what we did is we expanded and we created this this shelf right here which is which is damn near seven feet long, four feet tall, and we have accommodations for various different game sizes. Game sizes that I wasn't able to uh, hold before such as standing Sega Saturn games. Two rows for that. I'm very ambitious when it comes to Sega Saturn. I feel we'll be able to find a lot more Sega Saturn stuff. Uh, Nintendo PlayStation slots, uh, boxed NES, Atari cartridges, Sega Genesis. This is the bulk of probably PS2 and, uh, and, and Sega Genesis cartridges and, and boxes as well. And uh, I tell you what, I used to be very, very angry and uh, upset that the only area I had to hold these video games was in an 8x10 uh, space inside of this shed. But I have to tell you, and you know, for any of you guys that feel like, oh, I only have this room to keep this stuff in, or I have this basement to keep this stuff in, you know, I feel that I really do love it in here now, and uh, it's a place to keep things organized. And believe it or not, people ask me questions about, aren't you concerned about humidity and things like that? And no, that's not a problem at all. As a matter of fact. At night, it stays very warm in here because of the residual heat on the roof from the daytime and just the fact that the air temperature in here is, is warmer from the daytime. And then during the day, it's cooler in here because the door doesn't open that much and it had because it is cooled down overnight and the cool air stays here until the afternoon. So it's actually a well ventilated and well, well balanced and uh, comfortable temperature in here basically all year round. So I notice, you know, I keep an eye on, on cardboard boxes in here and whatnot, and everything stays pretty nice. So it, it, humidity and stuff like that really isn't a concern in this shed. But anyway, we managed to get all of uh, retro, uh, I'm sorry, 97 retro uh, game nerd stuff up here and some of last week's stuff in here. I know it doesn't look, you know, it's very difficult when you start a game shelf. You know, it looks abysmal. But that's the beauty of it. It takes time to fill, and that's the joy of filling a game shelf. Naturally, I'm gonna get some doors on here, but uh, to, to be honest with you, I built this in extreme haste uh, in a few hours just to get it up here because we have an overflow that I didn't expect for September. So, uh, let's get some stuff on the shelf here. Okay. So instead of wasting your time bumbling around with these games, uh, we put them all on the shelf here. We got PS1 games up here. We got our Nintendo games here. We got DS games here. Game Gear games here. Game Boy Advance here. Some box old stuff. Our Sega Genesis games will start over here. Our Intellivision games, which I will go through later and painstakingly uh, fold the boxes back into shape and fill in with the games and their inserts. N64 games. Some more Sega Genesis over here. I guess I'll put these down here for now. A Wii game. Our PS2 games. 
a box Super Nintendo, and our GameCube games right here, and we have our letter from 97 Retro Game Nerd right here. And uh, that's it. And you know, we've been getting lucky lately. Well, I hate to say lucky, but we've been working it lately. And, uh, but I have a feeling that this season is starting to wind down. And when it does wind down, I consider this shelf season two. Our goal was to fill up the shelf over the course of the summertime, and we managed to do that. Um, and now it's a, I think, I, I feel excited and I feel. Uh, charged up to now continue on and fill up this shelf. So, I'm Bithead 1000, and with your help, we'll get this shelf filled up. I'll see you next time. sake. I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm not doing this on purpose. That's it. I'll get the fucking hand crank out. You guys got another three hours, right? See that? All my years of winding my Victrola paid off. <laughs>